Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, specs on Intel's Rocket Lake, more good news on Nvidia's mining cards, RX 6700 XT specs, the pricing makes me cry, and Zen 4 gets a ton more cores. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, Intel still hasn't revealed the full specs of their upcoming 11th gen CPUs. Sure, they've given us the 11,900K, but that's about it. Luckily, in a new report from WCCF Tech, they share the specs for all of Rocket Lake's i9 and i7 CPUs. So yeah, let's get right to it. Starting things off, we have the 11700K, which as many of you know, like the others, is an 8-core 16-thread CPU. It comes with a base clock of 3.6GHz, an all-core boost of 4.6, and a single-core boost of 5GHz. Of course, the TDP is 125 watts, but that definitely doesn't mean much. All of these also do support up to 3200 DDR4 memory. The 11700KF is the same, minus the iGPU of course. Then we have the 11700T, which is their lower TDP variant. Next is the 11700 non-K model, which comes with a TDP of 65 watts, a base clock of 2.5 GHz, an all-core boost of 4.4, and a single-core boost of 4.9 GHz. The F model obviously has the same specs, minus the iGPU. And finally is the 11900 non-K model, which comes with a TDP of 65 watts, a base clock of 2.5 GHz, an all-core boost of 4.7, and a single-core boost of 5.2 GHz. Then there's the F model, but you get the picture. All in all, it's about what we've expected all along. If you ask me, the real thing to be excited about is Intel's Alder Lake CPUs, which are still set to come this year. But first, it's the perfect time of year to set new computer science goals, and there's no better way to learn the STEM field than with today's sponsor. Brilliant! The problem-solving based website and app with over 60 interactive courses in math, science, and computer science. And the best part is how Brilliant teaches you. See, every course has either storytelling, interactive challenges, and problems to solve. So you learn visually, am I actually doing it? Plus, they have some great courses, from learning statistics to programming with Python, algorithm fundamentals, and so much more. Brilliant has what you need, and they're constantly adding courses. So don't wait. Learn the deeper side of tech by visiting brilliant.org slash gamermelt, and the first 200 people who visit the link get 20% off the annual premium today. Next up for today, I have a follow-up to my recent video, where we discovered that at least two of NVIDIA's four upcoming mining GPUs are based on last-gen's Turing architecture. That was great news because it meant NVIDIA wasn't taking Ampere gaming cards to make at least two of the mining GPUs. And yes, NVIDIA claimed that they would use GPUs that couldn't be gaming cards anyway, but they would likely fall back on gaming GPUs eventually. So this was great to hear. Of course, it left two cards open to being Ampere. Well, in a new story from Video Cards, only one mining card is set to use NVIDIA's newest Ampere architecture, and that's the most powerful CMP90HX. According to their source, the card is based on the PG132 board, which is the same that makes up NVIDIA's RTX 3080. Of course, that means NVIDIA could still use GPUs intended for the 3080, but hopefully there's enough for binning so they don't. Either way, this is ultimately good news. Video Cards claims that all three of the other cards are based on Turing as well. Hopefully NVIDIA will release other variants besides the 3060 that cuts mining performance. Fingers crossed. Next up for today, AMD's RX 6700 XT is set to be announced in just a couple days, to which make sure to subscribe because I'll likely be doing a live stream of the event. Anyway, with it being so close, leaks are bound to happen, and today we have just that. First up, we have what looks to more or less confirm the specs we've been seeing for a while. In a recent post from 3dcenter.org, you can see they shared the specs of the Navi 22 GPU, which is what the RX 6700 XT is set to be built on. Either way, it comes on a 334mm squared die with 40 CUs and 40 ray accelerators. Basically, it's half the core count of Nvidia's Navi 21 GPU. Of course, we've known that for a while now, but what we haven't known is price. That is, until our next story, which comes from a Twitter post by Red Gaming Tech. 
As you can see, he mentions the pricing of the upcoming GPU. And according to his source, the RX 6700 XT is set to be either $479.99 or $499.99 US dollars. Oh, okay. Yeah, that that's bad. I mean, we knew it was set to be better than Nvidia's RTX 3060, but I thought it would perform around the 3060 Ti. Yet, that's only $400. That's a big difference, so there's really only two possibilities. Either the RX 6700 XT is way more powerful than we thought, or this is wrong. Unfortunately, Red Gaming Tech claims the source is reliable and that he's about 90% sure about it. If this is true, I'm definitely a bit shocked. Hopefully the 6700 XT is way more powerful than we thought, but my question is, what happened to mid-range? And lastly for today, AMD's next-gen architecture is apparently set to get a huge boost in cores. Of course, when I say next-gen, I don't mean the rumored Zen 3 Plus architecture is set to be on TSMC's 6 nanometer node. No, I'm talking the fabled Zen 4 is set to be on 5 nanometers. Anyway, the story originally comes from Executable Fix, who tweeted out the specs for Genoa, which is AMD's Zen 4-based Epic server processors, and according to him, it comes with up to 96 cores and 192 threads, which is obviously a huge jump from the current 64-core Epic parts. Not only that, but it's set to come with 12-channel DDR5, 128 PCI Express 5.0 lanes, a new socket, and a nearly unbelievable TDP of just 320 watts. And what's even better is that this almost certainly means their other Zen 4 base parts will be getting higher core counts as well, like their Ryzen parts. Not only that, but a slide recently leaked on the ChipL forums that confirms more than 64 cores, as well as new instruction sets. Basically, Zen 4 is looking really exciting, and AMD isn't looking to be slowing down anytime soon. So while that does it for today, are you really excited about Zen 4, or are you just bummed about that potential pricing of the upcoming RX 6700 XT? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you like talking all things gaming hardware, don't forget to check out the GamerMeld Discord server. And as always, have a great day!